Okay, um, welcome fellow members. Thanks for taking time to attend this meeting. Um, just from one note to start, we have a lot of information to go through, so please just hold your questions till the end, and we'll get to them at that time. So, again, thank you for coming. Uh, the reason to gather with you today is to share the basis of an investment plan that the club has been working on for the last several years, and to listen to your feedback. The goal of the plan is twofold. First, to increase the attractiveness of the club to the current and future members by offering new amenities based on their feedback and to tackle some deferred maintenance of the clubhouse and food complexes. The board unanimously views both initiatives as critical for the club's long term viability. With us today is John Snowager, principal and director of planning and chambers, our club consulting over the past five years, as well as lead architect David Gibbon. Arthur, excuse me, could you speak up a little bit? Sorry, yes, sorry. Um, so, John Snellinger and uh, David Wick from Chambers are here. And they have been our, Chambers has been our consulting partner for the past few years. John will walk us through the pilot. First, let's take a look at how we arrived at this point. The first one. So back in 2018-2019, we conducted a member survey. We had a feeling that perhaps we we'll want some things that we need to prepare on. After that, we should use two different terms, and we selected chambers based on the long track record right they have in the public industry. And that was an initial, initial way of conceptual long-range planning given to the board. We came up with this project that was in the 25 to 30 million dollar range, which involved a massive group of the clubhouse. Tennis and uh, microphone. Okay, got it. Um, so that was done in October 2020. Decided that's a little bit too much for us. So we came up with an, another plan was presented after some discussions, which involved moving the tennis courts, building an entirely new golf center over where the vacated course would be. And that's moving the course over to the uh, where the platform is now. Um, and once again, that got to be a bit much in terms of its in terms of its cost. So after a lot of discussions earlier this year, we came up with what you're going to see now, which is a scaled down plan. But I think it hits a lot of the things that we need. It's a distillation of some much larger concepts into one that's entirely appropriately sized to us monetarily. It's nimble. It minimizes the inevitable disruption on campus that construction causes, and it'll give us the best returns on our investment in the shortest time frame. We must always remember the cost of doing nothing isn't nothing. If we aren't moving forward, we're falling behind. So we really need to keep that in mind with everything you're about to see. So with that, I think John John's going to take us through the plan, and I think we hope, hope you're excited about it. <laughs> well, good morning, everyone. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. My name is John Snellinger. I'm director of planning and principal with a firm called Chambers. Uh, we're headquartered in Baltimore. We've been around since 1899. We work exclusively with private clubs across the United States. Uh, so we work, uh, we're a collection of architects, interior designers, and planners. Uh, my specialty um, is in the planning world. So pretty much every day of the week, I'm talking with boards of directors, long-range planning committees, and ultimately you, the membership, in developing investment plans like you'll see today. So uh, obviously, we've been doing this a long time. We work some, with some really great clubs. You can see nationally with Harvard Club in Boston, Desert Mountain out in Scottsdale. We we'll currently have a, a large project at Union League of Philadelphia. And then locally, you can see some of the projects that we work with, uh, the Creek, um, uh, uh, New York Athletic Club, Huntington Crescent, Scarsdale, just up the road, as well as half a stop a little bit down the Jersey Turnpike. So uh, we're really pleased to be working here. I've, I've been working here since 2000, the spring of 2020. Interesting time to get started on the planning project, but it's taken this long to get us where we are uh, today. Um, so real quickly, I'm going to walk you through the highlights of what we see as the 2022 investment plan. Um, so it's really made up of a number of different components, and you'll see on the screen is our kind of our high-level bird's-eye view of the various different components that I'll walk you through. 
Uh, we'll start with the Golf and Tennis Performance Center, which is being proposed. Uh, we also uh, will walk through some of the improvements uh, with the driving range that's connected with that program. And then we'll talk about the paddle and the pickleball facility, uh, uh, pl playing up on the recent uh, investment in the paddle courts that you have and the growing trend, uh, growing sport in pickleball throughout the country. Uh, then we'll talk a little bit about the pool, its existing condition, and the need for uh, replacement of that existing pool facility. And then we'll talk about this facility here, the clubhouse. Uh, so I'll go through each one of those, but I just wanted to give you an overview of the overall investment plan before we jump in uh, to each uh, component. So we'll start with the Golf and Tennis Performance Center. Uh, so this is an artist's conceptual rendering of that new proposed facility. Uh, that will be right positioned on the side of your first fairway, uh, as well as right near the driving range and the existing tennis courts facility. Uh, so we'll walk through some of the components within that, and I'll get into the floor plan specifically. Uh, so we have positioned this building to be uh, a replacement of where the current tennis shed is. And we really feel it will provide a wonderful enhancement to our tennis players. Uh, but also to be a year-round golf training and entertainment venue uh, for our golf instruction. Uh, so we really feel like that is a, a highlight of this program. Uh, we have positioned this to work with the existing topography. So this will be on grade on the main level with your driving range to be able to easily walk from uh, the current team service right into the structure. Uh, but you know that there is some topography down there, so we're able to provide uh, an underneath portion, which helps us from a cart storage uh, facility standpoint, really improve the overall uh, operation sequence of the facility. Um, so this position allows for also the ability to have a slightly elevated terrace that overlooks the tennis courts uh, for some great viewing as well as socialization opportunities. And as I mentioned, underneath the ability to have about 56 cart storage on the lower level of this facility. In conjunction with this development, we would also look at improvements to the range with regard to regrading and creating some targets out on the range to really enhance the overall uh, golf practice facility that you have here at the club. Um, the main level of the Golf and Tennis Performance Center will include three green bays uh, that can remain closed uh, during the uh, winter time. We can also have simulators in there as well. Uh, and the ability to open them in the nice weather and hit directly out onto the driving range. Uh, we're seeing as two of these uh, being open for member use and one dedicated uh, for private instruction with your pros. Uh, the hitting bays, as I mentioned, will have the TrackMan simulators as part of those and also all the TrackMan flight uh, paths that you can do to analyze your swing and all of those great technology tools to really enhance um, our facility. Uh, adjacent to that space with the golf uh, hitting bays uh, will be a, a casual lounge space with a, a fireplace, a virtual putting area, and a small bar for some events that you may have down there to really enhance the overall social experience, especially during the winter time of that. Included in this to really enhance the overall tennis experience would be a new tennis, lounge, a tennis pro shop uh, on the main level, and that would have direct access for our tennis players uh, directly off the tennis viewing terrace. And then there would be one large over, uh, viewing terrace overlooking the tennis courts to really uh, play out the ability to uh, have sight lines to our tennis courts. Uh, so this is the main level floor plan of that new golf and performance center, uh, tennis performance center. Uh, you can see coming in um, on grade here uh, with the ter upper terrace, walking into the tennis pro shop, which would be on the right hand side. Uh, you can see in the main center portion in the blue, uh, is where we have our adjacent lounge area facility uh, with some collection of soft seating as well as a small bar in the right hand corner of that on your screen. You'll notice on the bottom left hand corner is where we have a small virtual putting area to really play up uh, the potential for all of your uh, instructional capabilities as well as a, a cool social event. And then you can see at the top portion of the screen is where we have our three hitting bays the ability to open directly out and hit out onto the driving range to really work with our golf pros and enhance our overall uh, golf performance. Uh, you'll see we have some back of the house areas. We have our tennis pros office on the top right, as well as our pros office on the top left for golf, and some very convenient uh, restroom facilities for those that are utilizing the driving range, 
Of course, going out that door on the left-hand side walks right out onto uh, your existing driving range facility. So very convenient uh, for members. Uh, we do have then the viewing terrace, which is an upper terrace as well as a lower terrace, and all of those overlook uh, your existing tennis court facilities. Now on the lower level of this is where we have our cart storage facility. Uh, so it looks like a one-story structure uh, really from uh, the tennis court area, but the ability to utilize the existing topography, we have the opportunity uh, to have the cart storage below. So we wanted to do some artist conceptual renderings of what that new facility could look like. Uh, so you can see this is an interior rendering of that position. If you were standing at the bar looking over, you can see uh, the various different hitting bays. Uh, we have a collection of soft scene and a very uh, clean aesthetic and palette uh, relative to the interior finishes throughout this facility. And then just on the other side, you can see as if you're standing on the virtual putting green, uh, looking back towards the bar in the right-hand corner, and of course our hitting bays, and you can see them open and hitting out onto uh, the driving range. We think this would be uh, a wonderful amenity. As you can see in all of our aspects, what we're trying to do is increase the overall utilization of the club for our members, especially during the wintertime months. We really feel like if we can increase your utilization as part of this, we've improved the value and the relevancy within the dues dollars uh, for the overall membership. Uh, so with the golf and uh, range renovations, I just want to speak a little bit uh, to the range and what we're looking at doing. Uh, this is just the conceptual sketch. You can see that we'll look to regrade the upper T area uh, to be level with the mid middle T area and provide members entry into the golf and tennis performance center. We'd also look to have our range with four target greens of various lengths uh, to be able to provide our members with a, a range of distance as they're practicing. Uh, the range will be sloped in the drive that, so that the drives land on the range rather than disappear over the hill, which is a current challenge uh, with your existing range. Uh, and the fence between the first hole and the range will be modified to really provide uh, some improve, improved protection and security relative to that. Uh, so I would like, and as, as well as some additional landscaping, at this time I would like Arthur just to make a few comments relative uh, to the golf course facility. Thank you. Okay. We have to acknowledge that the past month has been a challenging one for the golf course conditions. There's been too little water, we have labors, too little maintenance, and of course the lobby are has to be These conditions were not for a lack of funds but for a lot of worker shortages that the Green and Grounds Committee is trying to address through accommodation of hiring initiatives and more thoughtful outsourcing using third parties for cleanup and maintenance and using our personnel for the higher value added activities across the course. Despite these challenges, we successfully completed sand capping holes 14 and 16 and reconstructed the bridge on hole 3, spending more than $750,000 this figure excludes an additional capex of 125,000 budgeted for the fourth quarter to include a dozen bunker companies. Parts are a little out of the Sorry. Yeah. yeah. Over the past five years, we have invested approximately $2 million into the golf course, in addition to an annual operating budget of $1.9 million. As part of the long range plan, the board, golf superintendent, and relevant committees are addressing long-term capital plans for necessary improvements in the golf course in a proactive and thoughtful manner. Enhanced oversight and governance will be necessary to ensure accountability for ongoing maintenance plans and projects. Monies from the increased recurring capital charges not earmarked for a long-range plan will be dedicated in large part to the golf course to ensure our most important asset is provided with the necessary capital beyond the historical thresholds to address car paths, Tea boxes, bunkers in disrepair, and developing a 10 year capital plan to ensure more proper ongoing bunker, green, and tea box maintenance. Oops. Oh. Joe Condomini is here, so perhaps Joe, you would like to add a couple of thoughts? I would love to. That Come on down, Joe. Thank you. Come on. And, and this works. Out. I need to test out the mic. Yeah, yeah. I feel Joe doesn't need the mic. But that's he might not. <laughs> okay. All right. Good morning, everyone. Um, I've been I've been very fortunate uh, to work. Let me just try this. <laughs> How's 
Is that okay? You're waking me up. That's good. How's that? Is that pretty good right there? Yes, it's good. I've been very fortunate to work with our current board and the previous board on designing this building. Um, since the day that I hired, it was uh, something that I put in my presentation because it seemed like it was very important to the club. Um, so I wanted to do, uh, wanted to design the best building possible um, that the members here at Bonnie Breyer uh, deserve. A couple of key points that I just wanted to point out. Uh, realize that these proposed facilities are, are, are perceived as amenities, but I think they're essential to kind of the longevity and um, you know financial well-being of the club. Just a couple points um, that I wanted to kind of point out here. I took a couple of notes here. Um, one thing that we can offer is year-round golf instruction, which we utilized this past year for the first time ever at the club. Um, something that I did, um, something that I, I foresee as having myself teach as well as maybe a full staff, you know, potential assistance down the road. Um, this could be a selling tool um, for future staff members that will be coming to the club um, just to offer them the ability to teach during the winter and just to have those kind of buildings on the range I think could be something that would be very uh, very beneficial to the club. Um, next thing I just wanted to point out um, we'll have the range I know it was kind of a dry summer this year but if we ever have rain or inclement weather throughout the season, we'll also have these bays avail available for practice. So uh, there's there's no more such thing as rain days here at Bonnie Briar. Um, something that we can do that our current members are doing now, I believe at the Westchester Mall, is we could run men's and women's leagues. Um, I've, I've spoken to a number of members that I know they go to this place at the Westchester Mall. So that's something that we could run throughout the winter. So golf will no longer be a seven to nine month program. It'll be a 12 month program here at the club. Um, one thing that I think is really important is our driving range is an asset that helps us kind of stand out um, compared to other clubs. If you look at two top 100 uh, clubs right down the street, Quaker Ridge and Wakefoot, they don't even have driving ranges there. So not that that is our competition, but something that stands us apart from our competition is our beautiful driving range. We have an amazing space there. And I think if, uh, you know, the, the ideas that the board has come up with, with my guidance here, just to level that tee, kind of raise it a little bit higher, um, to make the driver range level so that you can see your golf balls, where they land, having targets to hit at, I think will really help us kind of stand apart in that regard. And then the last thing I just mentioned, that I just like to mention is uh, just the state of the art kind of fitting and teaching bay that we'll have. If you see the design we came up with would be two bays dedicated, um, three bays in total, one bay dedicated to kind of private instruction and club fitting. We'll have all the shafts on the wall, all the technology to kind of measure and, and do things right here at Bonnie. Um, now all those three bays wouldn't be, the last bay wouldn't be dedicated to private instructions all the time. We'll be able to hold that up open that up to the members if they were unavailable. But I think that is a really neat tool that we would utilize here at the club. We'd be able to fit all of our members here, which we currently have been doing with TrackMan, but I think we could take it to the next level. And I think it would be a really neat kind of um, feature that we could do here at the club. Great. Great. Thank you, John. Thanks, John. Thank you. Thanks, Joe. And just to, just to echo some of Joe's comments, um, you know, we're working all across the country, and these are not just amenities anymore. Or um, we really see these as necessities for the club, as Joe mentioned. It seems like every one of our planning programs, we're having golf performance centers. It really uh, speaks to your dedication to the game of golf, and really enhance the overall uh, playability for the club. Uh, so the next component that we'll move into is is really looking at the mixed use paddle and pickleball facility. Yes, golf is your number one asset, and will always be. But in the club industry now, uh, it's really becoming more of a lifestyle. So all the amenities that you can have that support those that don't play golf or other members of the family that may not play golf. Uh, one of those is really looking at your rackets facility, especially with regard to paddle and pickle. Again, speaking to the ability to have year-round utilization. Uh, so we, as we look at this facility from the aerial, you can see uh, this would be this new paddle and pickle hut would be positioned right next to where your current paddle courts are, uh, kind of in that uh, lot area that we have. And then we've developed this very uh, size-appropriate building uh, to really be positioned on the site 
to provide a wonderful amenity uh, during the winter and colder months for our paddle users that are utilizing the facility, but also could be used, used year-round for those that are playing pickle down there in the summer or also some other uses as well. Um, so with regard to our um, various different components within that, uh, this proposes that new mixed-use paddle hut to be adjacent to the four existing paddle ports that you have uh, near the current carp barn to really support uh, your growing paddle and pickleball program. Uh, this approximately 1,500 square foot building will have an indoor seating area and lounge area with some soft seating, uh, a double-sided fireplace, uh, and the ability to have, uh, during colder weather, just the opportunity to have a nice uh, place to come out of the elements while you're playing paddle. We look to have floor to ceiling windows to really provide a lot of natural light and optimal court viewing from inside the lounge. Now, as part of this, we would have a kitchenette or a storage area to really design to facilitate the various different member functions that you can have or catered events that would happen with the paddle program as well as the pickleball program. Now, nestled between the paddle courts and the huts will be an outdoor uh, terrace area, uh, which would have great seating for uh, viewing of the paddle courts. We would have some lounge seating, soft seating with the fireplace there uh, for socialization. Fire pits, I'm sorry. Uh, as looking at this, the facility could be used year-round as an amenity, but could also be used for a member of events. We could have some summer camp programs down there to really support our youth uh, program here at the club. And this also provides additional restroom facilities in close proximity and accessible from the 10th tee from the golf course as well. Uh, so this is the floor plan for the paddle uh, hut facility, uh, the mixed-use paddle and pickleball facility coming in off of the parking lot coming into this elevated facility that would be directly on grade with the paddle court facility. Uh, you can see a, a modest paddle hut, about 1,500 square feet, uh, really coming in with a couple of unisex restrooms on either side, but really the crown jewel is that socialization and soft seating area within the paddle huts, uh, the ability to have views out towards the courts, a small kitchen and storage area uh, within the bottom right-hand portion, and ability to have an office for our pros uh, down in the left-hand side corner there. And then you can see an ample outdoor terrace area with a selected fire pits on either side, uh, really great for uh, viewing of the courts, uh, both during the winter time as well as during the summertime with pickleball play. Now again, we wanted to do an artist's conceptual rendering of what the interior of that facility could look like. So really standing against one wall, looking back again, really just trying to take a very clean aesthetic, nice neutral palette relative to the finishes, you can see the great high ceiling heights that we have. A lot of the windows provide a wonderful opportunity to viewing the courts and bringing a lot of natural light coming into the facility. Now the third of the four components is really looking at our pool complex. Uh, pools are the number two amenity for traction for prospective members. Golf is always number one, but really uh, we can see I feel like a club planner for 10-year-olds as it relates to the pool because there's so many things that are going on uh, out there. Uh, yours um, is approximately 70 years old, uh, your existing pool facility. To say, to say it's past its useful life, I think would be an understatement. Uh, but you can see here, this is an artist's conceptual rendering of what the new pool complex could look like. I'll walk you through the various different components, uh, but it's much more of an up-to-date. Yours is pretty much a... Uh, rectangle body of water and the advancement in pool designs really provide a lot of opportunities uh, with a zero entry type feature, doing away with the wading pool for all the disgusting things that happen in wading pools, and really going more towards the splash pad, much more of a contemporary design. Uh, lots of nice features around the pool with a slide, uh, as well as the ability to have a lot of shade components throughout that structure. So let me just walk you through some of the highlights. We'll get into uh, the conceptual plan. As I mentioned, uh, your pool is over 70 years old. Uh, the last major renovation to that occurred approximately 20 years ago. So as I mentioned, it's well past its useful life. Um, for those of you that have used it, you know that there are some issues. The deck is falling. Uh, we have pipes, pumps, and the pipes struggle to, to keep the water circulating, and infrastructure issues have led to some water retention issues uh, on the height of the season that we have. Um, so obviously some issues there as part of it. So as part of the 2022 investment program, uh, we see the complete replacement of the existing pool uh, in its current location. Uh, to really provide a wonderful amenity for our members uh, for that area. The new pool complex, as I mentioned, would have multiple different aquatic zones. 
Uh, we would look at having uh, the ability to have a zero entry water feature, again, a gradual entry. It's great for members with young children, but also great for more of our seasoned or older members, uh, really the ability so they don't have to climb down the stairs or ladder. It's a gradual entry into the pool, uh, a wonderful uh, feature as part of that. We would also have a six lane uh, recreational lap pool, great for your uh, swim team events, recreational pool, those types of activities as well. And then we would have a dedicated separate splash pad area with uh, water circulation opportunities and different types of uh, mushrooms for our younger children. Now as part of this as well, we would have ample deck spaces with expanded seating uh, to include up to 144 chase lounges throughout the pool deck area. And we'd have opportunity to have a number of different shade style features, whether it be a wood pergola type structure uh, to really provide ample shade uh, for those members that are enjoying the pool and laying by on the sun deck. Uh, adjacent to that area would be some recreational activities for our younger children with some uh, open space as well as uh, playground and recreational areas. So as part of this, um, the new pool house, or sorry, the pool house, uh, the, the pool house is not part of the program, but the existing pool house will have the locker rooms aesthetically upgraded uh, as part of this. So this is the conceptual plan for that new pool complex. I kind of share with you the various different features uh, on the artist's conceptual rendering. But you can see it's replaced in about its existing location of where the current pool is. You have, of course, your golf course to the right, uh, your parking lot to the left. So coming in, you can see the various different uh, aquatic zones within that. We have our zero entry feature with our water mushroom. Uh, going back towards deeper water, we have our slide for our young uh, activities for children. And then you have your recreational lap lanes area there, great for uh, playing for kids as well as for swimming laps. Uh, you can see the various different shade structures, maybe it's cabanas on the right hand side or that wood pergola on the top area as well. And again, you can see at the bottom portion is where the splash pad activities would be and the various different recreational amenities for our children. Uh, the bathhouse, current bathhouse would stay, but again, aesthetically upgraded uh, within the, uh, the fixtures within the locker room and changing room facilities. And then the last of the components, the fourth and final of the components, is really looking at this facility here. Um, it's been a part of our discussions from the very beginning on uh, the current infrastructure issues within the clubhouse, what could be done with this existing facility to really enhance uh, the overall uh, uh, feel within the clubhouse as well as address uh, some of the deferred maintenance that exists. Uh, so as part of this investment plan, it includes repair and, of critical infrastructure and some updated finishes uh, throughout the clubhouse. Uh, pre predominantly, it re uh, replacing the current kitchen and improving the glass bot is a major portion of the infrastructure issues as part of this, uh, as well as looking at uh, replacing the water main and bringing other areas up to code. A lot of this is really the infrastructural issues that uh, of the deferred maintenance within the existing clubhouse. Looking at repairing the facade and replacing the rotting wood uh, of throughout the clubhouse area that we have on the exterior. Looking at providing a convenience restroom for our, uh, women by the lower terrace area. Uh, and then look at aesthetically upgrading the dining room and other finishes throughout the clubhouse. Uh, so this investment is not a wholesale refurbishment of the building, but it really addresses uh, a lot of the infrastructural issues that we have uh, and really elevates the overall interior experiences to really bring back the clubhouse to where it should have been if we had continued investing uh, in the cap in capital over the last few years uh, within the clubhouse. Uh, so hope you, hopefully we've gotten you excited about some or all of the components in the 2022 investment plan. Unfortunately, with change comes costs. So it's my distinct pleasure to turn it over to Brand to talk to you about the house and how we can that. Thanks. Uh, good morning, everyone. I'm Brian Sakakini. I chair the Long Range Planning Committee. Uh, so to segue from John's comment, um, this is the uh, cost associated with the plan. I'll walk through each of these now. Okay, so the golf, tennis, and performance center with the new range is estimated to cost $4.1 million. Um, the next facility is the paddle and there's the Paddle and Pickleball Hut. We estimate the cost of that facility at about 1.1 million. The new pool complex is estimated to cost 4 million. The clubhouse enhancements, about 2 million. We have a contingency of just under 10% or about a million, so the total cost is 12.2 million. To put that in perspective, um, the club has an asset base of about 15 million. 
and we generate revenues in excess of 10 million. So again, we talked about period, uh, previously what the estimated plan was of a 25 to 30 million dollar investment. When I um, assumed chair of the, of the Long Range Planning Committee, we really tried to pull that number back to something that was more reasonable and, and more in line with our um, asset base and our revenue and could be financed reasonably easy, easily. Right, so how are we going to fund this? So basically we've got a special assessment plan of about 40% of the 12.2 billion, and we'll walk through how we calculate that in a minute. Um, we have about 5% of the total cost being generated by cash on hand that's on the balance sheet, plus uh, some revenue from the cell phone tower. Uh, the board has approved uh, some increases to the capital charge. Currently we are charged $150 per month that will go to 225 in 2023, and then um, and, and then 300 a month in, in uh, 2024, and that will still keep us a bit below the average of Westchester uh, country clubs, which are generally about 36, 11 per year. And then finally, we plan on taking on a little bit more debt. Um, there's a perception that the club has a lot of debt. We don't, uh, thanks to Barbara and our new uh, controller, Joe. They fixed our debt at 3.76% uh, last year when rates were super low for the next 10 years. Um, just to give you a perspective on the debt, basically uh, our debt previously, our interest expense back in 06 was $460,000 per year on a uh, base of about, um, on, on a membership base of about 4.6 million. Today, our average interest expense is less than 200,000 on a membership base that's uh, over 7 million. So if you look at our coverage ratio of our debt, basically before we used to cover our debt about six or seven times, now we cover our debt more than 30 times. So I think there's a legacy perception that this club is actually uh, you know, over, uh, over leveraged. It's not, if anything, we're under leveraged. And a 3.76% debt in an inflationary environment of 7%, our interest rate is actually negative. So that leads to total sources of 100%. Um, so let's walk through the special assessment because I know that's obviously uh, top of mind. So the board worked through a number of different arrangements on the special assessment. We ultimately came out with a targeted special assessment of 12,500 in total. We then adjusted this figure based on three factors. Date of birth, so age. Uh, number two, date of initiation because there are folks who joined recently for whom we didn't think we should charge the full the full special assessment. And um, there are folks who joined in the 2015-16 period who didn't pay any assessment. We are asking them to pay a little bit more. Uh, but in general, the assessments range from a minimum of 3,125 if you're older or a pool member. Oh, sorry, the other category is, is membership category. So if you're a pool member and you're 75 years old, you have a couple different discounts and um, your, your special assessment could be 3,125. If, however, you're a regular member um, and you joined in 2015, 2016 when you didn't pay an initiation, you'd be up to the sort of uh, 13,750. Across the entire membership, the average assessment is $9,800. As I said, so in addition to the special assessment, we're also going to earmark the incremental capital charges for these projects, but that will leave the legacy capital projects dedicated to the golf course. Uh, just on the debt quickly, uh, Webster Bank is offering a five to seven year term loan um, at seven year treasury plus 140 basis points uh, or or 5%. So we think those rates are very good. That'll give us flexibility to arrange uh, to to manage the assessment over a couple of year period if, if the membership so desires. Uh, but effectively, that's the rate that we'll be borrowing. Thank you. So with that, that's an overview of the financials. Let me send it to Arthur. Thank you. Uh, thanks, Brad. Um, okay, so the plan timeline. So following membership approval, the implementation of this would proceed this way. We'd have a membership vote on November 1st. Design, documenting, permitting, that's going to take a good part of next year. It's going to be the spring. 
And if it all goes through, we can start possibly construction on the pickleball in 20, spring of 2023. But the performance center would wind up being in the fall of 23. And the pool construction would be in the fall of 24. Why so long? It's going to take a long time. The permitting for the pool takes a substantial amount of time. We've contracted uh, the, uh, the pool designer, Tectonic, who is um, the one who did the outflow pool. And by the time you get all the design permitting done and you're ready to go, you need a contractor. And you're going to probably wait. They're booked a year in advance. So there's no reasonable way that we could possibly get that done with, started before the fall of 24. Yes, so here we are. The, sorry, this is Claire. Um, the, the construction time for the performance center in the pickleball hut, 12 to 18 months. And obviously we're going to make every effort to minimize the disruption. It will be disruptive on the campus to the greatest extent possible with the courts remaining open and in operation during construction. And here we are with the, the, uh, the pool in, being done in 24. So, Can I just, oh yes, I'm sorry, Teresa. So, please. Just, so there's a lot of information, obviously, in the PowerPoint. There is also um, a booklet that has been drop shipped to everyone's home. It went into the mail yesterday. It looks like this, so you should see it. Uh, tomorrow, it has all of the information that was in the PowerPoint came from this booklet. So there's pictures, there's FAQs. Um, we will also be posting this PowerPoint on the member section of the Bonnie Breyer webpage, so you can uh, revert to it if you have questions. And it's our hope that this video works and we can post the video for people who are unable to attend. So there's a lot of detail. It'll take time for you to get through it all, but, um, but that's what's coming to you. And then certainly we're all available as board members and the management team for questions. Thank you guys so much for joining us today. Thank you, Teresa. So just some closing thoughts. Um, that was a lot of information. You know, thank you for your attention. Honey uh, Bryer is at a crossroads of sorts right now. Uh, we recently and rightly celebrated our centennial, and uh, we now must take the steps needed to secure our future. Our membership is robust. Our financial position is excellent. The plan you've just seen represents not just buildings, but a new way of thinking about our club. What can we do to improve our campus and the amenities we offer to maximize its value to members? We should always be doing this, for if we don't, we will fall out of step with our current and future members' desires and start a slow, costly, and inevitable decline. The board is unanimous in the view that this plan is a great start, and we hope you agree. Thank you. And now we can open it up for uh, your questions. Sorry. Hi. I have a couple questions, particularly to the planner, about the timeline. Um, and I don't know if you have it as written. Um, I'm just curious as to the square feet of the tennis facility. I'm not sure I heard that. Yeah, David, do you have a, a square footage of what that facility is? So this facility is um, 1,500 square feet. Yeah, the, the, uh, the, the paddle and pickle is 1,500. How yeah, about the, the golf the, and tennis the, performance? The, the, do you mean the golf and tennis performance I, no, or the pickle? The yeah, the, ten, the tennis and golf facility. Oh, the other yeah. one. that one is uh, 8,000 square feet. Yeah. Yeah, about eight thousand square about eight thousand square feet, and that includes the lower level with the with the cart storage area. Okay. So. One comment I would make to the planners: I played tennis for a long time and sat on that terrace that we have for a long time. Every year they try different kinds of shade, and they buy something from Costco and they buy something from <laughs> and it blows away. And people are very careful not to sit in the sun. They play tennis in the sun, but when they get out of the off the court, they want shade, so if you could incorporate that. <clears throat> I think that's a great point. We'll make note of it. Another so. point is I'm at the pool almost every day during the summer. There are about maybe 50 kids. I could ask our manager that. Are there close to 50 kids at the pool? There are a lot of people in camp, and they're young kids, and they drop stuff all over the place, and they drop their bags, and their tennis bags, and their golf clubs all over the place. There is not enough dedicated space for campers. If we're going to run a 50-child camp, and I'm assuming it's a money maker, um, we have to have the facilities for it. So when you're planning your tennis facility and your pickleball facility and even a clubhouse, there should be some dedicated space for camper stuff and for camper, maybe there's an indoor day now and then, lunch, they kind of take over the, the facility. 
And that's great. I'm glad we have a camp, but there are also people who like the pool. Um, the other thing is I couldn't really tell what happens to the what we call the great lawn down here. Is that is that being encroached upon by the new design? Or no, no, no. Good, because it's used for a lot of things. Um, and is the length of the lap lanes okay for a swim team? It is. Okay, good. And I saw you had cabanas being at the pool all the time. I don't see the need for cabanas. There, because it kind of sets people apart. Who has a cabana? Who gets to have a cabana? Do I pay for a cabana? Do I rent a cabana? It's kind of silly for us, for Bonnie Bright. But we do need shade, and I'm glad you um, put that in. Um, and how long would construction for the pool take? Always you try to do it, you close it after Labor Day and try to open Memorial Day. Okay, so. that's, that's the goal, okay. Um, is that realistic? <laughs> Uh, in a lot of our projects it is, but it comes down to the labor and the ability for the contractor to get it done. Oftentimes you kind of shave off a couple weeks of the, you know, start it in August 15th, so you can pick up a couple more weeks there and it might open, you know, realistically you hope May or Memorial Day, but you might have to go into June. So usually we can get it done to minimize the disruption to the membership. And one more comment about the pool. I noticed you talked about chaises for around the pool. A lot of people like sit-up chairs. And it's nice to have a couple tables with sit-up chairs for the people who want to play games or play bridge or play finesse or whatever they may want to play. Just a couple of those. And sit-up chairs don't take as much room as the lounge. So it's really good to, to have some of those as well. They have them now, and I think we should keep that kind of diverse seat. Thank you. Thank you very much for your constructive yeah. feedback. We've made notes of all that. Yeah. So. Yeah. so building on that, um, the just splash pad looks great, playground looks great, but you incorporate some seating for the parent who doesn't actually want to be in the splash pad or in the playground just so that they can shade the seating, they can watch their kids, Bench. so the benches, etc. Um, another good point, I like that. Uh, the <laughs> echoing the necessary necessity for shade, anything like that, the big fight at Bonnie Briar is finding the tree or the covered area. Um, and then so my kids are on the younger side, but quickly heading into teened up and unwillingness to come to Bonnie Briar. So <laughs> is there a chance that we could turn the pickleball hut, put a ping pong ball, a ping, ping pong table, a foosball table in the corner so after dinner, we send them that direction, put your coat on, go to that video game, arcade something, so that they have a dedicated space that is not that four room off the men's locker room. Um, if it's 1,500 square feet, I feel like it's... Um, and then my other comment was, um, could we turn the tennis, golf tennis area, or even the pickleball area, into private rental space so we could do special dinners, or that's not here, but like a smaller venue? Because we're always looking for hosting a 50th birthday party. I've got 15 people coming instead of the giant venue. Yeah, I think to, to address some of your points, I know it's been talked about uh, as a team about the potential uses for the paddle hut facility to be used more than just uh, during the winter season for the pickleball and also for youth activity space. I, I know that from, from my travels across the country that the tweens are the most destructive group uh, in, the, in, the, uh, in the club, so you've got to try to find a place for them that, that they can you know, do their you know, get into trouble um, or not get into trouble. Um, I think um, to your other point, um, uh, I think absolutely we've seen a lot of these golf performance center as being utilized for private events and being able to rent those out. So I'm sure Joe would look to wonderful opportunities to be able to utilize that uh, from an operations standpoint. So. Yeah, we've, we've designed them specifically with that in mind. So we can have catering in and, and, and things like that. So. so can you talk a little bit about what the aesthetic improvements to the pool house will be? Um, I think that's a little bit of an eyesore and not meeting the needs of the kind of high use pool families and community down there right now. It sounds like we'll be waiting two years for the improved pool. And then how will we bring that pool house up to standard? Cool. Well, I think the, so the, the idea is that the structure itself is going to remain. It's sound, it isn't 70 years old. The, in, the interior needs to be pretty much got it. It's it's oh, rather, it, it's okay. municipal. I mean, we don't want that. Okay. Um, we frankly are just not that far along yet, but the pool 
Consulting was the last person we got on board. That literally happened you know, six weeks ago, two months ago. So we aren't there yet. But we will certainly be sharing that with you. Um, we haven't done it yet, but we're quite aware. You walk in there, it feels like, yeah, you know, it's like when the Hamuk's pool opens. It's just, it's no longer current. It's like a hotel that hasn't been upgraded, you know, for two decades, and it hasn't. So, well, I can't tell you exactly what that's going to be. We're quite aware that it's just not what it should be. And it's got to be nice. You want to feel good bringing a guest there, you know, and you don't really know. So. Okay, great. One of, the, one of the issues we've had at the club uh, is that we've been unable to host third party events like weddings because the facility is not big enough. Is that considered at all in the plans? Yeah, it, it was, and I think it, it cascades. So if you have a facility that's large enough to have a large wedding, then you need to have parking for it. You can't shut the club down for members you know, while that's going on. And we, for example, we literally don't have enough land to supply parking for it. Um, it's, it gets dicey around, you know, big, busy holiday weekends. And um, while it certainly was considered, it's, it's really just not in the cards for us. I mean, we are limited in the size of our events, and that's the way it's going to be. I just, we don't see a way to do it. You could knock down the house and make it much bigger, but again, you'd be encroaching on our existing land, and I think that's going to be an issue. So I, we don't foresee that happening. It, it, it was contemplated in those earlier versions was, you know, making this facility... It, uh, to something that could accommodate that, but through the iterations, you know, for the reasons Arthur said, we just, just you know, smaller events that we could host <clears throat> in the structures that we have, we think a better return and more reliable in case, you know, God forbid you can't host them, you know. Are we anticipating any permitting issues with any of the revised structures? I know back when we thought about some of the other plans, there was concerns that some of the members on Weaver and Cornell would object to uh, our plans. Um, I'm sure it'll go perfectly smoothly. Just <laughs> uh, it's, it's, um, no, it's, we think it will go through. I mean, we are, we're, we're, there's no for recreation. It's our property. You know, I'm sure if we drop a dish, somebody on Carnell's going to complain. But what we really do feel that ultimately these are sound plans. They're not insane. We're not constructing a tower, um, like up the corner. So, well, I'm sure it will it'll be painful, but I'm sure we will get it through. If the board feels out of confidence. Just, just to echo some of Arthur's comments, I mean, we were very sensitive in the design of the placement of where that new golf and tennis performance center would be, and then utilizing the topography there to try to keep the scale of it uh, low for being very <coughs> of the existing neighbors that are there. Yeah, and, and we do plan on permitting each each amenity separately, so if one gets delayed, it will separate <coughs> other projects. Um, I just had a, one, one comment. I do a ton of touring of the perspective families and they want amenities so this is amazing because they, they want to know what else besides just the pool and the golf like what else do we have so this this is great i'm excited to to take people around to tell them um what we're doing i have two quick questions one is the membership vote the full membership or just the voting membership it, it is just the voting membership i should have addressed that earlier thank you for catching it um you know according to our bylaws only regular members can vote on whether to take on the additional, you know, debt and, and to increase the assessments as per. But the board's really, really interested in knowing what everybody thinks. That's why this meeting is open to everybody, because it's going to impact every class of member in a positive way. So that's why, if you're just a pool member, we want to hear your pool comments. We really want to know what you think. So it's well, only voting, only voting <coughs> members can vote. <coughs> the bylaws. It's really important that we get all your feedback, and that's why this is open. And then I just had one other question. The assessment, is that uh, over a certain amount of time, or is that just a one-time payment? Currently, everything that you saw um, in the deck is based on a one-time assessment. Um, the board is contemplating looking at you know splitting that, and you know, the details of that will Will be the giving an option for yes. payment over two years, but and there. How will we find out? What so there, changed. that would be. Uh, we just would need to. We have coalesced around the concept of allowing people to opt to pay it up front or to pay over two years. The math that's included in that needs to be um, just you know agreed on and voted on, and we expect that would happen at the October board meeting. So certainly prior to the November first board date, uh, vote date, you would have that information as to what a two-year payment term looks like. 
and, and the exact amount. That we the exact yeah. amount. Yeah. But, going, yeah. yeah, that'll be coming out in the when next few days. Our plan was to post that to the website, to everyone's portal today. Um, unfortunately, there were some uh, software issues, so we might just be forced to send a letter to everyone advising them of what their figure is. But right. we're, um, hoping, we're hoping that we can get it up on the website, so when you log in, you'll see it. Yeah. Um, but short of that, you will, you will receive it in the mail. Joe? Mm -hmm. So I'm probably going to be clearly in the minority here, but I'm opposed to this because I think that the money is probably too small and that the, the allocation towards these projects is incorrect. The paddle uh, facility, in my opinion, is way too big. At one point one million dollars, I, I, that blows me away. I think that the hitting bays and the uh, pro shop are absolutely essential. But at I think it's three point one million dollars just for that. that for, for which one of the building? For the uh, golf tennis, uh, four point one plus the range. Well, how much if you exclude the range? Oh, uh, well, the range is probably seven fifty. So. Okay, so but but well, but, well it's hard, but, but, but Joe, there is well, wait, 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 let me let me finish in yeah. this month. Well over three million dollars for three indoor hitting bays that you're going to charge us then hundred dollars an hour to use. I mean, I I just don't get it, and I'm sure a big portion of that expense is because we're moving we're moving the uh, the golf carts barn basically underneath it, so we have to build it out to be big enough to accommodate. The golf carts, rather than really the other way around. Oh, maybe we could squeeze them in, or some a few in, twenty in, fifteen in. No, we, we moved the whole thing over there, and I, I, this is primarily a golf club. I would ra much rather see more hitting bay, more hitting uh, tee boxes, which I think are woefully inadequate here. Uh, if you're a blue player, it's too short. If you're a white player, it's too long. For the, for the women players, you know, especially the beginning women, winning with the women players, the gold boxes are invisible. I mean, my, my wife played at Whippoorwill. I happened to look at her uh, at the scorecard. They have eight tee boxes, eight sets of tee boxes. <laughs> and what is the length of that course? 6,700 yards. So I started looking around to see what the length of some of the courses around here are. That seems to be almost like a magic number. If you go over to Whitefield, 6,700 yards, Scarsdale, uh, 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 um, uh, Ardsley, wherever you go. And, and these clubs are getting 80, 100, 120,000 dollars initiation fee. We're getting 40. Why? Our number one driver is the golf course. There's not enough money being devoted to moving the golf course forward. What we're doing is just doing, you know, basic maintenance. We need to be moving the golf course, which is really driving the ownership forward. Length of the course, more tee boxes. Yeah. Dude, less money you spent on essential things, which I think are, are essential. The, uh, you know, the paddle and the indoor hitting facilities, absolutely essential, I, I agree. But not not at those kinds of uh, allocations. Yep. Just just to address the paddle hut, I don't think you can make the paddle hut any smaller than what we have. Fifteen hundred square foot is a is is the right size that we see in the industry. I mean, you're you're not going to get much of a six hundred square foot paddle hut facility. Uh, so well, I don't think you need even six hundred, but let's say six hundred. Like building costs that are more reasonable. You're talking now about uh, seven hundred and fifty dollars a square foot, right? Yeah, prices are coming down. The lumber so side to COVID I mean, you can down. build a nice house for five hundred dollars a square foot. I mean, uh, it's not but anymore. But, but, <laughs> but this is, yeah, this is yeah. but but you don't need yeah. indoor outdoor That's fireplace. Right. You don't need seating for forty people inside the, the hut. Yeah, I think mean, well, so let, let's let. I'd like to try and address a couple and please jump in. Firstly, regarding the golf performance tennis center, we're using the topography. Basically, we're not excavating anything. We're taking the slope of that range, and that's just there. So that doesn't add a lot of cost. Well, golf is our primary amenity. It's still a, it's the Donnie Breyer Country Club, and we have to have these other amenities. These are really good retention mechanisms, and they are great recruiting mechanisms. I visited 
Rayburn's uh, facility. And uh, the pro there said, basically, you know, you take a tour, Lauren brings somebody in there. It kind of closes the deal. We need this to, uh, nobody argues about the golf course. We know that, that needs to continue to evolve. But we also need to have a real plan for it. We, we, are, we are changing from being reactionary to trying to be looking forward to doing this the proper way, just as we've done it, you know, in presenting this plan. It's thought out. We've got something that can, you know, we can build on there. So I, I would not completely agree. I think these other amenities are absolutely necessary. It's not an either or uh, equation here. We need all of this. Right. We need all of this. Right. And, so and you have X amount of dollars. Aussie so what do you have, where do you allocate those dollars? So if, so if I go out and buy a house, I know what my budget is. <laughs> you know, with three point one million dollars or three point three million dollars just for three hitting bays and, and, and the, the golf shack and the, uh, the tennis pro shop, to me sounds. Yeah. I, I just, I, I would just like to say historically you have spent pretty much predominantly most of your money in the golf course. And you are where you are today because you have done that. Not to say that wasn't bad investment, but I'm saying in the industry, it's going to more of a lifestyle. And the ability to offer more amenities for members is what grows the membership base, makes it more exclusive, and you can raise your initiation fee because of that. Now, you're never going to compete with some of the, 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 the high-end, the wing foot, those. I know that's not in your... But you have to be able to appeal to a broader base of membership. And that's what we're trying to do here, is to be able to offer those very different amenities. I know you probably see it differently, and I can no, respectfully no, I disagree. disagree. I completely agree. But what I'm saying is that, as I said, these are essential services. Essential, but not at these, not at this cost. Yeah, and, Joe, and, and what is more essential is addressing the long-term needs of the golf course. Not just maintenance, but moving the golf course into the future. Yeah, so Joe, I would just say um, the cost of the facilities, we did try sizing them different ways, and the reality is it doesn't save a lot of money. Um, if you try to, you know, size it down by by 600, by 200 square feet or 400 square feet, the cost is really in the restrooms and the code and things like that. So we did work with the architects on a bunch of different configurations, but I, I do think the Golf and Tennis Performance Center, because of the topography, allows us ultimately to move the carts from the paddle area down. And so to Veronica's point, that frees up that whole area by the rackets for future programming use. So it gives us a lot of flexibility. And on the golf course, you know, we spent this year a million dollars. We spent two million annually just on maintenance. So we spent three million on the golf course this year alone. Over the last five years, we spent um, we spent about five million dollars. And again, we're spending two million dollars annually, right? So we're spending a lot of money on the golf course. I think we do think we need a plan around, you know, being proactive about tees and and tee boxes and all that stuff. Um, and Greens and Grounds is working on that with Nick. Um, but that's not really part of this plan right now. But I think in the future, again, with the earmark of the capital, we'll free up additional capital for the golf course as well. Right now, the golf course is fighting for 860000 annually in capital charges that get spread across the house, rackets, the pool, and everything else. If this plan gets passed, then in large part, those funds will be dedicated exclusively to the golf course. Because we're funding everything. I'm going to one. So... I'm assuming that all of this planning was based on the member survey that came out a couple years ago. So, as a golfer, tennis player, I'm very excited about this plan because it feels like it reflects the member's request for additional work to bolster the tennis course and the paddle and the pickle and especially the pool. So it's not, like most of the members have said, just have to do one thing. I feel like this plan would have reflected that. But yeah. that I feel like it wasn't built out of the back. And which gives me reassurance that the vote will go one direction because more people are seeing this and thinking, these are checking the boxes of why I'm going to stay here for another 10, 15, 20 years. And the board is, is representative of the membership, right? And the board's fully unanimous around around these investments. It's, it's a 15-person board, and we're very diverse. We have people with small kids, people with kids who are, have grandchildren. We have golfers. We have tennisers. Um, we also, so to your point, yes, it all had it, its sort of nucleus in, the, in that member survey, but we've also had two or three different long-range planning committees involved. 
uh, the board and the Long Range Planning Committee have reached out to all the other committees to get input. So it, I appreciate you making that comment. It is something that has very much been crowdsourced and really um, you know, run through a, a pretty rigorous process to where we feel really good about the fact that this is not an either or, right? We're not giving people one thing. One thing. We're trying to create an environment and a country club here that is, that is balanced and forward-looking and really serves the needs of all our members. So um, I'm excited about it too. So thank you for that. <clears throat> nice job, very thoughtful, um, super exciting to, to hear all these ideas. Um, talk to me about how we comfortable you are with the cost estimates. I mean, we're talking about breaking ground on the pool in two years. Inflation's running 10% a year. Mm -hmm. You know, it, it, I saw a contingency in there. I'm sure you guys have gotten quotes and contracts, which is not inconceivable in this environment to have a project like this go 50% off the budget, which would obviously impact right. yeah. in this room. So I'm just curious how you guys, you know, your level of comfort with the cost estimates that you perform with. Sure, it's a great question. So with respect to the Golf Tennis Performance Center and the Paddle Hut, those are further along and we've got very sophisticated schematics that were put out to contractors for bids. And the contractors came back with multiple questions around, you know, to clarifying stuff. They spent a lot of time, so we feel very good about those estimates. We have a contingency and over time that contingency will, will come down. Um, the other dynamic that's happening, obviously, is prices are now starting to fall, right? Lumber's back to where it was before, copper's falling, so if you look at, at commodity prices, they're starting to come in. So we feel better about where that's coming in. Now, part of that is the economic issues, and the, the, that's an issue. But on the pool, we're a little further behind, so we don't have those very detailed schematics yet that have been priced to contractors. Um, but So we hope to get there, but we feel very good about the cost estimate right now. Right. And just, just for the pool, we, 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 John and I interviewed three different firms, and they all came. They all said, this is about what it's going to be. They felt quite comfortable with this as well. So, um, okay, it's, it's 12.06, so if we can take one more question, that would be great. Four. 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 Paul. Okay. Just, um, so that was the cost side, obviously clubs, two sides. The revenue side, the economy's crazy, and I'm sure, what wiggle room did you build in? Obviously, the economy is out there, and there's unknowns, and... We could have more members, less members, and sudden severe changes. And that's always, when I read about clubs, that's often the Achilles heel of, a, you know, not getting the revenues that you expect. Yeah, no, that, that's a great question. So we traditionally have an attrition rate of right around 5%. Um, we forecasted that if this goes through, potentially we have an attrition rate of 10%. So we've modeled that for 2023. Um, now, there are some associated revenues that we think we coop with these programs and everyone we've talked to, we spent a lot of time talking to pros who have built similar, you know, facilities and the ROIC associated with them. So we feel very good about that for the but for the purposes of modeling, we've assumed a higher attrition number. It's important that we backfill our membership. We're having an open house October 2nd. We really would love for you to invite other members too because or other families because that's something that's critical. So so we are cognizant of costs. We've modeled them. Um, we have enough flexibility in our operations to support that, um, but we're going to have to backfill the membership because we will see 10% attrition, and we expect to see that. Um, you didn't mention dues, okay, throughout all of this, and um, you know the driving force here is the golf course. That's what brings you your revenue, okay. I believe the tennis people pay less. I believe the all the other membership. Categories pay less. We pay the most. Okay. Can you address that? Um, so your dues. question is dues. So dues have been over the last few years. Dues haven't kept pace with inflation. Uh, we've kept dues relatively low. Um, we'll be working with I think the budget next year to come up with dues. I don't know what more to say on dues. I mean, do, dues, how do you, dues and capital you together. You, how do you say that they're relative? Low. No, I said that we've been keeping them below. We've no, been below, keeping price below, below. Price oh, below. below. Oh, below. Yes. Correct. No, we've been so, keeping correct. prices. We've been keeping due in, dues increases below the rate of inflation for the last three years. Well, there was no inflation up until the last year. So, but well, 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 there's always a little bit. point two, eight point three. I mean, it's right. Last two years. But none of this. But none of this impacts dues. This is all about capital. This is that the dues of the monthly, you know, that's the fuel that runs the place. This is a completely different discussion. Okay. Right. 
Okay. All right, did you just say the vote on this is November 1st? Yes. Yes, November 1st. yes it is. And yes. we'll be able to vote by proxy to mail. Sorry, yeah. Go one last question. Go the old yeah. golf hut, or what will happen to that? Should be torn down? The town's uh, not. No, 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 the old, no, the okay. existing structure with the bag. Yes. So that saves because that's one of the, that's really where the bags need to be. When you're pulling in, you don't want to be running your bags up. You know, 150 yards up the up the course. You know, if I forget it, if I need a glove, I don't want to have to run up there. That that's a really that it's a good spot for what it does. So, and, and the, are you freshening that? Up? It could. So, you, we've already done some and yes. did the interior, and we'll get to the exterior. Sure. So there'll be Absolutely. a small tennis pro shop in the in the mixed use facility, um, like clothing, you know, yeah. apparel shop. But the golf apparel uh, stay there. will stay there. Yeah. Okay. But then off season we can off Joe can we sell can stuff into body yeah, prior so merchandise yeah. in it's, the it's golf It's flexible, but you'll so. have that space. Okay. Yeah. Great. Thank, Thank you very you much. So much. Thank you so much. Appreciate your time. We really Thank you. appreciate it. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.